It's a very basic law of the universe that only so many things can fit into one place, and Hearts of Iron 4 implements this in the form of combat with. But what if we were able to make that disappear? Yeah, with the help of this mod, that is now possible at last. Fortunately, it's only possible with vanilla. I don't think it's compatible with anything else yet, but I think it gives us a good opportunity to see what would have happened. World War II, but there's infinite combat to it. <laughs> And I think the most difficult nation to play as with this would be Japan, just because the best strategy for Japan is to have very good units to fight China's really weak units. But they have so many units that if they combine them all together in one place, and then they have infinite combat with, our really good units won't be able to break them. So now the question is if I should still try to make some decent divisions, or if I should just spam out as many divisions as I can to take advantage of the infinite combat with. This also makes Mass Assault Doctrine completely pointless though because the main reason to go for this is mainly I would say because of the extra combat with. So since combat with is now infinite, yeah it doesn't really matter that much. So yeah, we'll, we'll probably just go with the superior firepower. I think that's the only other valid doctrine because tanks are, are useless. They're useless. Instead of getting good tanks, you can just put 10 more divisions into the battle. I guess the only thing we want to make sure though is we probably want higher breakthrough than their defense. That's all that really matters. Yeah, we should probably swap out artillery for anti-tank. We're, we're just gonna have no artillery in this build because it doesn't matter. Artillery is just to get more soft attack, but you don't need artillery when you can just put 10 more infantry divisions into the battle to get the more soft attack. Like, it's pointless. I feel like I'm going crazy. Oh, the one thing I just remembered though is even though there's infinite combat with, there's no not infinite supply, so supply will still be a limiting factor of how many divisions we can get in areas. And Japan starts off with pretty terrible supply along this starting border, so we'll definitely have to build up the infrastructure and port to take advantage of the infantry spam tactic, but yeah, I just realized that. So there is still technically a limiting factor of how many divisions we can get into one place. And now that we have our silent workhorse, we can do one of the best, if not the best, decision in the game to do is prioritize steel for guns. Lots of free military factories, really good. We can start producing even more guns for our divisions. I think the optimal strategy for divisions, because you technically could just spam out one widths maybe? I, I don't know, how, how good are one widths? But like, I think the best thing to do would be to create as big of divisions as you possibly can, because then you get like the highest infantry to support company ratios. But I, I don't know, I'm not an expert at the art of infinite combat with. Okay, let's just see how this starts against China. They have more divisions than us, and that's bad considering they can get as many divisions into battle as they want to. The question is if the AI will actually adapt to this new system of war. And I feel like they kind of will, because China at the start of the war tends to just battle plan even if they're losing, so yeah, I kind of do fear that they are going to attack into me and win. Hmm, they're actually doing pretty bad, even though they have, they have a lot of divisions though, but still. They're 27 versus our 8. Our 8 seem to be doing a lot better at least. So yeah, hmm. This infinite combat with is interesting. It seems to be going pretty good in some ways, and in some ways it's just terrible for us. I, I really don't know. <laughs> Okay, this is definitely interesting. I wouldn't say it's making the game terribly difficult. It's just making microwing a lot different. It's not like what I'm used to. I think the best strategy probably would have been the old one, maybe. Maybe I should have just made like regular good divisions and then planned naval invasions. I was just planning on this front only, but I'm, I'm starting to make a naval invasion army anyways. I feel like that's probably still the best strategy is to 
to go for a naval invasion or two. We'll have to see for sure though, I just encircled a large part of their army, so I might just be able to battle plan with the infinite combat with or something, I, I don't know. Infinite combat though, it's like really easy for players like me to take advantage of, because when China had a lot of divisions, it was kind of fair, but now that they have all this encircled, like, it's just fun, infinite combat with is great. I should just always play with this mod. Okay, and I think China has finally, you know, been defeated. I've kind of even forgot to just finish escalating the war in China. I'm still really interested to see what will happen in Germany, though. My bet is that the same thing's gonna happen. Germany's just gonna win against France, and then, I don't know, the Soviets is gonna be what's interesting. I'd love to see what happens there. I guess I can just play out the game until Barb starts. Okay, and perfect. That was a great China war. Not the best China war I've ever had. About 100,000 total casualties, so I would consider that pretty good, though. But yeah, I guess we'll just full annex everything now. Eh, things over here seem to be about normal, I would say. I can't remember how slow Germany usually capitulates Poland. Maybe Poland's doing a little bit better than normal, but eh, for the most part, it seems normal, at least for now. Eh, yeah, the infinite combat with doesn't seem to be helping out France that much. Luxembourg's old on a little bit longer than normal it appears, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay, it seems that most things are going just normal for now, at least everywhere else. The China War for me, I guess, was kind of normal. It was just normal in a weird way, like the battle system wasn't normal, but the war went pretty normal, I guess. But yeah, let's see what happens against the Allies, and by let's see what happens, I mean we'll just run, run over the Allies. Also gonna start building collaboration in the Dutch East Indies, too, so when they capitulate, we get some of that rubber. It's begun, so I really wonder what's gonna happen over here. Looks like the Soviets are doing bad. Um, yeah, so what's going on is the Germans actually have a lot more divisions than the Soviets, so then when they get the infinite combat with, they're just, you know, kind of rolling over them. Okay, well, I think I may have spoke too soon because the Soviets moved all their divisions to their front and it seems that they're doing a lot better of just holding now. Yeah, this is an interesting development for sure. I didn't expect them to actually hold so well, but yeah, they do have a lot of divisions and this is kind of what I thought would happen. At first, they were just being stupid and not putting all their divisions in the right places. Wow, I just got 20,000 guns from Tibet. 
Um, that's quite a bit of guns from that one country, um. And now I have a nice 5.5 million manpower on extensive conscription as Japan, how? Do I have this much manpower, you may ask? Well, you know, once you have like 90% compliance in Japan and China, you pretty much have infinite manpower. Even though they're not cores, you still get like 12% non-core manpower. So yeah, that, that adds up when you occupy all of Japan and China. And that manpower will only keep going up pretty much infinitely. And now we'll just train a whole bunch of divisions for no particular reason. Okay, so last time I played as Japan, I invaded Africa and the UK, and then the Germans were able to defeat the Soviets today say we just take a more direct approach, you know, we have some more fun with the infinite combat with, that's all I'm saying. It should end for the Soviets, we could probably beat the Soviets alone, and with the Soviets fighting the Germans too, they, they really can't do anything. Okay, and let's see what happens, everything's ready for this invasion. <laughs> Looks like the Allies are kind of successfully landing, um, Germany, you know? You can probably take off some divisions from that front of yours. I've, I'm pretty sure I got you covered for the most part. Even if the Soviets start bringing a lot of divisions over here, there's like no way they can manage this like all front war. Like every land border they have, they have a war going on there. Except Finland, I guess. Nice, and these divisions are the perfect division actually for this infinite combat with scenario because just looking at things, We've lost less people in total across all wars than Romania, and we have the majority of the war score on the Axis side, so they, things are working out pretty well. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we didn't get the most score against the Soviets specifically, but still be fine. We'll still be able to take a lot and maybe make some pretty good borders. Well, yeah, infinite combat with definitely an interesting experience. Kind of makes it extremely difficult if you're fighting into a lot of divisions, but it's really easy for players to exploit, kind of. And now we formed just like Asia, I guess, with Japan. Anyway, I guess if there are any other weird mechanics you'd like me to experiment with, remember to let me know, and I guess I'll see you all next time.